Hey guys, I'm Apollo, I'm the IMT-80 carry, and we're just going to look at Samira, because she came out recently. Uh, I've played her a few games now, like maybe up to 10. She's kind of hard to get, because she gets banned a lot, but I'll just go through like each ability and then kind of go from there. But her Q is kind of like, a little bit like, uh, I wouldn't compare it to Ezreal Q, but it's just like basically shooting a pistol, and then it works with your passive. Kind of like Ezreal Q, I guess. The way I used it in lane, at least, was just... It's it's a good way to like last hit minions if you're getting zoned off. It's got decent range. I actually don't know the exact range. It's not as much as Ezreal Q. It's like, it looks like 800 or something. The 800? Maybe. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, long range, longer than your auto range. Stacks of Conquer. When you get into melee form... So when you get into melee form, which is kind of our passive, when you get into melee form, you... It turns into kind of like an AOE swipe, which is really cool. I just love the I love the love the effects of this this champion, and then it stacks up your passive, which kind of we'll go into that a little bit later, but gives you movement speed and eventually will be able to allow you to use your ulti. Um, so yeah, that's her Q, and then her W is basically like I mean I think this is the it's definitely the most noticeably OP thing, but also just for an AD carry to have, but also uh, kind of, it has like a skill cap to it because it's a really long cooldown and essentially what it does is like a pseudo wind wall kind of spell shield effect where you kind of spin around a circle and it dodges everything. I'm going to do this. So it basically, if any projectiles are coming at you during that one second window, it will um, block or repel anything that comes. It's not going to repel this fear, not that I really timed it well anyways. But um, here I'm gonna go ahead and kill this guy because you know he's bothering me. So uh, yeah, I think th I think that's the really cool kid. The cool thing about our kid is even though this does seem pretty busted and you know maybe I don't know how they would change it, but just having kind of like that silver spell shield or like wind wall, it's just a nice thing to have as a need carry. And also it, it because it's such a long cooldown, you actually do have to be really careful when you use it and how you use it. So I think that's really cool. And then I think if you hit something. Yeah, if you hit something with her W, you still get a stack for your passive. Wait. Am I wrong about that? Yeah, you do. Okay. I think it's because I wasn't hitting it something. Okay. And then um, her E is also just... It's kind of standard, but it's also a nice ability. It's just a dash. So you can dash uh, onto something. And then you can also dash Q, which basically has like leaves like a trail of pistols behind you i don't know if you see the difference there but like e is normal and then eq i have or i did it twice there because here so like i was able to do a little bit of damage and you can kind of combo it together um i don't know i feel like that hasn't really it's not really showed in the tooltips but i noticed you can eq together i think you can q flash too yeah you can um and then it gives you attack speed so it's nice and then oh the really really nice thing about it is it gives a reset so if you kill something let's see if i can kill this warbuck real quick uh i'm gonna just ulti here no problem getting those conch stacks up so my thing just reset boom and then i can go again and dash something like that so that's the it's kind of the you know the reason why she feels a little overpowered is when you start getting the resets you get really strong and you're just popping off, going everywhere, super mobile. Uh, and then this is the, I keep saying this, but the, the, the next part about the kit is her ulti. And this is kind of what her passive is. Um, oh, I should talk about that last part, but her passive basically, uh, whenever you hit a new target with an ability, you get a stack. And so you, you keep getting stacks and once you're at, once you get like your style points up to six, which is this bar right here, you can press ulti. Uh, and it's just essentially like a Katarina ulti, but you can move and it life steals and it doesn't have a cooldown. So this was kind of the, the thing that was most broken on release. It, it felt like did way too much damage. The life steal was a little bit too overpowered with it and they tuned back the damage a bit. I think the life steal is still the same, but, or it applies life steal the same way, so I don't think it changed anything. But in terms of the damage output, it was a little bit broken, a little bit uh, overtuned.
but it's better now. And yeah, I mean, the there's some small things I kind of missed. Uh, if something is immobilized, so not necessarily just stuns, but like roots and slow, I think sl like knockbacks. I'm not sure about slows. Um, I might have to double check on that. But uh, anything immobilizing uh, will make them na uh, knock up. And it's actually really, really strong when you're paired up with like any kind of CVC support, like Pike, Nautilus, Leona, those supports. It feels really, really strong. Oh, I'm so dead, guys. Just kidding. When they're low HP, I can kind of show it here. When you're in melee form, you actually do like percentage max or percentage magic damage based on their missing HP, which is pretty nice to have. So if you ever in the opportunity to get melee range when they're ha below half, I think, I think. Or actually, it's not below half. Just below half is just based on their missing HP. So when they're getting low, going to melee form is a good idea. And yeah, stack and conquer. I don't know, like, I wouldn't. I don't know, like, the combos. I guess I can kind of learn as we do this. But I think. Oh, uh, so I got I got six stacks basically just auto weaving with all my abilities. Most of the time, what I've learned is in a team fight. You're generally kind of staying ranged until you can stack up, and then you want to. And then when you commit, it's when you can get your ulti. So like I kind of mess up there, but usually when you when you dash in, you know realistically you're gonna you have to, you're gonna be a little bit squishy because you're the AD carry. So at least when I when I when playing her, I usually like to go in when I know that I can ulti afterwards, and then you know I guess clean up the team fight after that. I guess my general thoughts. I think she's I think she's a super cool champion. It kind of did suck that. She got like a little bit of flack because of how broken she was, and uh, not that I disagree. It did, it did, it just kind of. I, I didn't feel like there's much appreciation to um, like the way she feels, and I guess yeah, just like the the the, the theme of the champion, the thematics. Uh, I think she has like a really cool, I don't know, really cool kit. Uh, she might seems like she's gonna be a little bit broken for the next couple of um, patches until she gets tuned back down but I can see myself I, I can see her being in the meta for a while and as for the build that I've been going I think the general build at least I saw in the beginning was let me just get some gold Oops. the general build I saw in the beginning was like Essence Reaver IE and Berserker Greaves I think Berserker Greaves may not be necessary you can go some kind of defensive boots like one of these like Ninja Tabbies or something uh, just because attack speed doesn't scale as well with her. Because uh, your majority like casting spells, you're like dashing in with your R, so your attack speed scaling is just kind of whatever. And then uh, from here you kind of go general like... This is what it's on the beginning, so like PD or something into... Not DD, uh, like more like Dust Dance. Oh, wait. Something like this. This was more of like the general build. But then, more recently, I think people have decided, I, I guess more recently, I just learned this today, but uh, people have been going um, BT first item into IE into Death Stance. So, and then like having like an Ninja Tabbies, like I said. So this is definitely the more defensive build, and I guess, I, I'm not like, I'm not 100% positive on this yet, but the BT first felt pretty good, especially when like it was even or I was winning because you just become super tanky and you 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 uh, utilize the lifesteal really well with your ulti so it allows you to go in. In general, usually getting some kind of lifesteal item in the beginning or it uh, lifesteal item in the early game is going to be much more beneficial than, you know, let's just say like an essence reaver, right? Cuz you have it's really strong for laning. The only problem is you fall off in damage. Um, but I think because her Maybe it's because her kit's a little bit overtuned. Your damage seems to be fine. You don't really lose out on the match. I'll lose out on that much as long as you're able to go in. So I, I don't know. It, it seems like an interesting build. You know, you're very really based off of life steal and uh, just kind of survivability, so that you can eventually stack up your ulti and maybe get like a reset and keep going. So I'll, I'll keep testing around with it. Maybe see if it's actually good. I really like this EQ combo.